All right, you're off. Okay, hello, uh, I'm David, and uh, my project is for an exhaust kick. Um, right, so how and why? Um, I chose this project because I was challenged by my manager um, to find uh, time-saving techniques for future installations um, at my workplace. Um, I use brainstorming techniques, peer-to-peer -peer discussions, and um, project selection tables like this one, um, where I compare the quality, scope, and feasibility of the project. Yeah. Um, each of them I rated between 1 and 5, giving them a metric number, um, with the highest number being the um, project I chose out of the two. So I narrowed it down to two project choices out of my brainstorming before I did that. Um, so, what have I done? I've made a system um, that will allow for a remote manufacture of the exhaust system from the test engine to the test cell exhaust extract flange. Um, this, I'm hoping, will save time and, and, and money. Previously, exhaust systems would be made in cell. Um, when, when the install has been completed in the installation table, um, unfortunately in a test cell no machinery and welding are allowed, so it can be quite a lengthy process walking between a test cell and the welding area machine shop. Um, the jig will allow the previous engineer, the engineer of the test cell to run the test for longer as they won't have to stop to allow for the engine to go in before the exhaust is made. Um, for every day that the test cell is not run, we'll lose about a grand. So it quickly accumulates if you have to have two weeks of downtime just because someone needs to make an exhaust yep. and instrument it. So the idea is if you can make everything outside of the cell, um, you, don't, you don't impede the, the test cell at all and you can carry on testing. Um, currently exhausts take about three, four, five days to make, three to five days in the cell. I'm hoping that the jig, I haven't been able to test it in real life because we haven't had a, an installation to do with it. Um, I'm hoping it'll take two days max because you're going to be right next to the machine shop in the installations area where you can weld and everything. Um, implementation um, went like this. So this is my Gantt chart. I use my Gantt chart, my logbook to track my project. Um, the the main issue that I came across, the largest the largest setback was was here um, back in February, um, where I I from research I realised that I would not be able to buy a base for my jig off the shelf, um, so I had to design and manufacture that myself. Unfortunately, straight after that, when I went to make the jig, the material that I designed to use it out of had just been used to decide to use the same idea but scale it down. It still works efficiently, but it's not as robust and durable as I hoped it to be. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's my, that's my drawing assembly drawing and that's the original base that I designed yeah. um, so that's that's the, that's the result the finished project is constructed of aluminium strut and mild steel for the exhaust flange and the base um, I use quick release connectors and angle brackets to strengthen and reduce the sag in, in the jig um, it allows for easy reusability and adjust you can adjust it very easily um, I fold it flat as well, so storage isn't a problem. Um, so here, here I've simulated um, an exhaust position from the cell in the installations area. Um, so, oh, sorry. Uh, to conclude, um, the exhaust jig operates as it intended. I met all the specification. Um, it results in both substantial time and cost savings. Um, everything came to under £200 budget, which is specified on my, my project. Um, there were a few modifications that were um, 
suggested, like making it even lighter by making the flange and the base out of aluminium. Um, highlighting the jig because it is low level. Um, it could be deemed as a trip hazard, so a way of spraying it bright yellow or orange or something to make it really stand out um, was was given as a suggestion. But I looked into it and you would, to spray it, you would limit the maneuverability of it and the adjustability of it. All right. um, so I, the only way to really do it is to galvanize the aluminium, which would be quite an expense. Um, and for the future, I think after it's used in each cell, we're likely to etch it in that position. So once it's adjusted to the right position, we'll etch it, etch each, each of the columns, and then you can just, when you, if you do that cell again, then you can just resume the same um, position. So that's that's it in a nutshell.